Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today's presentation is about using a T-handle on a lathe or a mill with a spring-loaded or a stationary conical point locating the back of the T-handle. Not a good idea. Don't do it. And uh, like a friend of mine used to say, it's impossible to know what you don't know. So if you see other makers doing this, take, pay close attention to the tap body and you know, you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's get on with it. Before I start this video, I want to introduce you to this little guy right here. I've shown these before, and you've probably seen them on other channels. But let me show you. This is called a tap guide. Normally spring-loaded, because naturally there's a spring in here. And this little tip comes out. It's got a cup on one side, and it's got a point on the other side. A lot of people that own these things don't realize that this is double-ended. If it's not, well, they'd make one that's double-ended. I also keep a variety of tension springs on hand to drive the appropriate size tap. You're not going to drive an 080 thread with the same tap spring that you're going to use on a half 13. Some taps have a hole in the back. It's okay to engage the center and just watch the progression of the tip as the tap gets deeper. Give you some visual reference on how deep you've just tapped that hole. And this is the purpose of this video. There's a hole in the back of a tap handle like this, which theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, should keep the tap going in straight. And this is the whole purpose of this video. I continue to see other channels using tap handles with a spring in the center and driving the tap in and professing that, hey, look at that, it's going in straight. Well, I'm going to prove to you right now that it's not going in straight and it's really not a good idea for the smaller taps. If you do that, you shouldn't be doing that. This is not a precision hole. It was probably used when they made it and might be good for a larger tap, but for the smaller taps, the, it's just really not a good idea. And you can tell by looking at the shank of the tap here, as the tap is going in, watch for what I call the hurricane of the body of the tap. And as this gets deeper into the part that's being tapped, translation of that whipping stress is going to end up right on the last couple of threads or somewhere thereabouts, and you're going to end up with a disaster. Now, I've prepared two blanks that I'm going to prove this particular claim, and I'll let you make up your own mind. I'm going to use a tap handle for one of them, and I'm going to use a direct drive on the end of the tap or the other one with a mid-length driving handle without that okay if you're going to use one of these be careful how you use it and in my opinion and in my shop no bueno do not do that you may think it's a good idea but it's not okay let's go to the lathe pop this thing in show you what it looks like if you know what you're looking for here we go First part of this demonstration, I'm going to use the pointed end, and I'm going to use the pointed end against the T-handle and the thread, the tap, and the part. I want you to pay attention to the body of the tap. And for sake of this demonstration, I'm using non-magnetic aluminum. <laughs> All right. Nice little tap handle, very secure, new tap. Ideal setup. Spring loaded center, T handle, tap, part. I, for sake of demonstration, I'm going to spin this in reverse. Let me zoom in on that so you can get a really good look at that. All right, guys, a little bit closer look. We've got the T handle. And for those of you that are going to say, I don't believe it, Chuck, spring loaded center, T handle, tap. I'm going to spin this in reverse because I don't want it to start to engage, but pay attention to the body of the tap versus anything in the distance. Watch. Look at that. Can you imagine if this tap was only a millimeter and a half in diameter and you were driving it into a piece of brass thinking this was a good idea? After something that you worked on for hours and did a really good job with and you were proud of and something so stupid 
happens and snaps that tap off not cool now i'm going to use the exact same tap but i'm going to reverse the center of this little driving feature right there and i'm going to drive the tap from the end of the tap using the exact same tap i'm going to pull this out of here i'm going to put it in a homemade this is homemade lock it down Going to reverse the center on this put it right back in the machine exactly the same setup that i just had uh, as far as using the chuck in the center I'll reverse it Set up this time, this is still going in the drill chuck. This time we're going to engage the tap body directly into the cup center of the tap guide. Driving it from the outside. Okay, let's go over the lathe, put this in. Okay, we are driving directly off the end of the tap here, turning it in reverse. Watch the concentricity of the body. Night and day difference. T-handles are not precision instruments. Do not trust them as a precision instrument. Now I'm going to take this tap out. I'm going to put it back in that T-handle. We're going to chuck up on this, and we're going to watch the handle run out just to prove the point. Okay, I think that is an undeniable increase in accuracy and precision engaging the tap directly. Do not use that tap handle like it, like you'll see it before. You won't see it done on this channel, but don't do it. Tap it straight. Spin it around, expose only the square. And let's put the T handle on. I think I've made my point about using the T-handle with the spring-loaded center. Don't do it. If your tap doesn't have adequate square driving feature on the end, it's okay to just press this up against the side of a grinding wheel and extend these slots a little bit. Just don't interrupt the square on the end. That way you can use a larger handle if you have something that requires a little bit more torque. Just make sure that when you use the cup center on your device, that it doesn't hit the handle and it still engages the tap. That'll give you a good spin. Keep a variety of springs around, for different size taps, different course, different materials. You'll know after a while which one to use for what particular combination of variables. If you don't have one of these little guys, make one of these little guys. The smaller the handle, the smaller the tap, the better the feel. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope that you got something out of that. Do not, one more time, do not use this with a spring-loaded center and think you're going to get something good. You're not. Just don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Enough for hand. Thanks for watching. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well, happy, and safe. All the above me. I'm out.